Welcome back to Tech City. This is Brian and I hope you are all having a great day. And if not, then hopefully this video will make your day great. And just a second, let me overclock my hair. Okay, so that's much better. And today we're going with an all new PC that costs around 2000 USD or 3000 AUD to build, but will definitely kick the pants out of gaming, streaming, productivity, and video editing. Though this time around, let's talk about what parts we are putting in the build, then we'll quickly build this big chunk of thunder, tune it, and then run some benchmarks. Now straight away off the get go, when going with a new PC, you're not going to get the price performance levels that you're going to get with that of a full on used parts build. But that being said, you will have, or at least should have, absolutely no hassles involved. You also get lengthy warranties, everything is clean, and you won't need to clean or replace anything yourself, which can save a lot of time and everything comes with an easy to follow instructions. So there in general, there's way less risk involved as opposed to going used. Not to mention everything is supported in the latest drivers too, and also customer support is there to help you through troubleshooting. Okay, so now for a breakdown of the parts. We went with Cooler Master's latest Master Case 5, which is their mid-tower ATX case that actually supports extended ATX motherboards. Then for the mobile itself, we have an MSI X99A RGB Carbon Gaming Pro, an i7-6800K, which is cooled by a Cooler Master Satan 240 all-in-one. The RAM is Apace's Panther Memory 32GB kit, though if you are like me and you are editing lots of 4K video footage, then you may wish to add in another 32GB of this stuff. For the graphics card, we have an MSI GTX 1070 Gaming Z, eBay red black sleeve cables, Western Digital 3TB blue for backup, and an A-Pace of 1TB for the main OS drive in gaming. Also another option is to have an NVMe drive. The one I have here is an A-Pace of 480GB PCIe M.2 which I can use as my scratch drive for Premiere Pro. Lastly, all this is powered by the Cooler Master G750M semi-modular power supply, and this build tallied up to around 1979 USD, or 3,005 Australian dollars. Also in this case, I replaced the fans with Jetflow red LED lit fans from Cooler Master, actually four of these, and also got the clear side panel for this case to show off my 1337 hardware. So these options did cost a little more, but they aren't really needed. So finally after setting up the PC, it was time to boot it up and test it out and see how well it performs in games. The OS used is Windows 10 Pro 64-bit, which can still be upgraded from a cheap copy of 8.1 Pro. As for overclocking this beast, I managed to get it to 4.2GHz at 1.31V. Broadwell EX99 CPUs are renowned for being lazy overclockers, and this certainly wasn't an exception. The graphics card however was screaming past 2 GHz even with out of the box settings, which made this great for playing the latest demanding titles at even 4K on high settings. Here are some benchmarks for you guys.
Damn, there we have it, 4K gaming, this thing can do it. Though not max ultra settings, I could still get high out of a lot of the settings and it was a very smooth and awesome experience, really satisfying. As for editing videos on what is to become my main PC is simply bliss. Although some people say you only need 32 gigabytes of RAM, I found myself coming into memory errors when editing large videos with over 100 gigabytes of footage. Putting in extra 32 gigabytes of memory solved this problem and editing with an NVMe M.2 PCIe drive was a smooth experience for productivity and both saving time. This is definitely gonna be something a small business might wanna look at. The last part of the performance with this build is the noise and temp levels. Not only can I overclock it really well, but the noise levels on idle were whisper quiet, which can be tuned from the MSI motherboard itself. And on load, the temperatures were very well controlled with noise Noise creeping up a little bit, but still then, not even anywhere near annoying. And finally, moving on to the Cooler Master Master Case 5, which was sent out as a review sample. And what can be said about it? Well, firstly, I enjoyed building in this case. Everything was so pleasant and well thought out. The cable management at the back was fantastic. Installing fans on the front had nice options, fitting up to three 140 millimeter fans. The options for rads can also fit a 120mm on the back, a 240mm on top, and a 360mm with dust filters extending to the top, front, and bottom. I did find at the top, however, I could only screw off the rad at only six of the eight points that the radiator had support for, and I had to remove the dust filter to do so. Moving on to the front input-output panel, there are two USB 3.0 connections, audio in and out, hard disk drive light, reset, and power buttons. Behind that was two handles with plastic armor that was just coming off which kind of confused me since I would have loved the options to have just removed the handles completely for a cleaner look. Then there is the option for two five and a quarter inch drive bays at the top, below that two three and a half inch hard disk drive drive mounts which slide out and then on the bottom inside there is room for two more two and a half inch drives that just sit in front of the motherboard. Below that is the semi-enclosed bottom of the case where there is room for an additional two and a half inch drive and also besides that there is the mount for the power supply which has some soft supports there for easy mounting. A bottom facing mounted power supply is standard here and the two feet below that have strong rubberized grips that are some of the most rigid I have ever seen. Working with the cabling in the Master Case 5 was also extremely good. Dare I say this is the best case I've ever had in terms of workflow. This thing was just so damn easy to move in, screws fit first go, there was no sharp edges, cable management spacing was generous with so many places to zip tie off to, included accessories and screws were also more than generous. This in my opinion was the standout feature of the Master Case 5, that is the flexibility, solid construction and ease of room to work with. The final look is very clean as well. Anyway guys, that's it for my new 4K video editing gaming slash streaming PC. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did then be sure to suplex that like button and let me know in the comments section below, have you tried video editing before? If so, what program do you use? And if you just want to say something else then go at it. I love reading the comments section as always and I'll catch you guys in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.